Now that we know what SEO is, let's take a step deeper and understand something super important that works behind the scenes, the search engine algorithms. What is a search engine algorithm? Let's begin with this. When you search something on Google, like best shoes for basketball or how to make Oreo milkshake, have you ever wondered how Google decides what to show you on the first page? That's where the search engine algorithm comes in. A search engine algorithm is like a super smart robot brain that quickly scans billions of web pages and picks the one it thinks are most helpful for you. Think of it like your school librarian. If you ask her, where can I find books about space? She doesn't hand you random books. She gives you the ones that are most relevant, easy to read and reliable. Imagine you're looking for easy science project ideas and you type that into Google. Within a blink, it shows you thousands of results, neatly arranged from most helpful to least. But how does that even happen? It feels like magic, but behind the scenes, there's a super smart system at work called a search engine algorithm. This algorithm works through three main steps, scanning, indexing, and ranking. Let's start with scanning, also called as crawling. Think of it like tiny robot spiders, also known as crawlers or bots that travel across the internet visiting every website. They're not reading the site like we do, but rather collecting information like titles, text, images, and links. They scan each page to understand what it is about. Imagine you started a blog about travel photography and posted a page titled Top 5 Places to Click Stunning Sunset Photos in India. Google's bot will visit the page, scan the title, your photos, the captions, and the way the page is structured. Next is indexing. Once the bots have scanned your page, they store all the information in a giant library called the Google Index. This index is like a huge digital filing cabinet that holds data about billions of web pages. So now your sunset photography blog is stored in this cabinet with the tag that says sunset photos in India. This way, the next time someone searches for something similar, Google knows your page exists and what it's about. The final step is ranking. And this is where the real magic happens. When someone searches best sunset photo spots in India, Google looks thoroughly its index and picks out pages that seem useful. Then it ranks them from most to least helpful based on hundreds of signals. These signals include things like how often the keyword appears, how fast the page loads, how recently it was updated, whether it works well on a mobile phone, and whether trusted sites link to it. So if your page has great content, high quality images, loads quickly, and works on both phone and laptop, it has a much better chance of showing up at the top. Now, let's take a real life example. There's a 17 year old named Arav who runs a website that helps students crack aptitude tests. He writes simple tips, creates downloadable flashcards, and shares practice quizzes. His titles are clear, like top 10 shortcut tricks to solve math 
questions fast, his site gets scanned by Google bots, added to the index, and then ranked based on its quality. A few months later, popular education YouTubers like the Learno Hub mention his site in their video descriptions. That gives this site more credibility. And soon, when students search math shortcuts for competitive exams, Arav's website starts ranking on the first page. That's the result of good scanning, indexing, and ranking in action. Let us now explore the fascinating world of SEO by understanding how Google's algorithm works. Imagine Google as a librarian of the internet. Its job is to scan, organize, and rank billions of web pages to give you the best and most relevant answer when you type a query. This process starts with something like crawling and indexing. Google sends out bots known as Google bots. These bots scan websites across the internet, read the content, and store important information in a massive database called the Google index. So the next time you search for something like easy chocolate cake recipe, Google doesn't search the entire web in real time. Instead, it quickly pulls results from its indexed pages. Now comes the ranking part, and this is where the algorithm gets really smart. It uses hundreds of signals to decide which pages should appear at the top. One of the first signals is keyword relevance. Google checks if the words in your query appear in the page title, meta description, headers, and body text. But it's not just about stuffing in keywords anymore. Google uses advanced concepts like the natural language processing, the NLP, and latent semantic indexing to understand the context of the content. So even if your page does not keep repeating the exact words, easy chocolate cake recipe, Google is smart enough to understand that words like cocoa powder, bake time, and microwave mug cake are all closely related. This is because Google uses something called natural language processing, NLP, which is a type of AI that helps it understand how people naturally speak and write. And don't worry if that sounds complex, we have got you covered. In the next video, we will explore different types of keywords, including something called the Latent Semantic Index, the LSI, which is a fancy way of saying related keywords. Stay tuned. Next, the algorithm focuses on content quality. It prefers content that is original, informative, and well-structured, and is updated regularly. That's where the freshness factor comes in. If a blog post from two months ago has new techniques and photos, it can easily outrank a page that was written five years ago and never updated. Google also cares about how fast your page loads. This is where core web vitals come into play. They measure the speed, responsiveness, and visual stability of your site. If your page is slow, lags when loading, or shifts layout when opening, it can lose its position in search results. Add to that the fact that Google now uses mobile-first indexing, which means it looks at the mobile version of your website before the desktop version. So if your site looks great on a laptop but crashes on a phone, that's a problem.
Another big ranking factor is backlinks. These are links from other websites that point to your content. Think of backlinks like votes of confidence. If a reputed website links to your article, it signals that your content is valuable. But quality matters more than quantity. A single backlink from a respected domain can be more powerful than 10 links from shady websites. That's why Google introduced algorithm updates like Penguin, which penalizes unnatural or spammy backlinks. Now, here's something really interesting. Google actually watches how people behave when they click on search results. Think of it like your teacher checking if students are paying attention in class. If someone clicks on your website and spends time reading, scrolling, or watching a video, Google takes it as a good sign. It thinks, nice, this page must be helpful. But if someone clicks and then quickly leaves the page within a few seconds, Google assumes that the content wasn't useful. So the more people click on your page and stay longer, the more Google trusts your website. This is why it's super important to create content that's helpful, interesting, and easy to understand. In short, Google not only looks at what's on your page, it also pays attention to how people react to it. That helps it decide how high to rank your page in the search results. All of these signals come together with the help from Google's AI-driven systems like RankBrain and BERT. RankBrain helps interpret complex search queries and understands intent, while BERT helps Google process the nuances of human language. And together, they make search results more accurate and useful. And that's not all. Over the years, Google has rolled out multiple algorithm updates to keep improving its results. The Panda update cracks down on duplicate or low quality content. The helpful content update focuses on rewarding people first content. Updates like Hummingbird and Bird are all about understanding what the user really wants and not just matching the keywords. Let's look at a simple story. Meet Zara, a high school student who enjoys cooking and runs a blog about quick and easy recipes. One day, she writes a post called Three Minute Muck Cake for Teens. Her blog works well on mobile phones, loads quickly, and has clear step-by-step -step photos, a short video, and easy instructions. She also uses something called structured data. Think of it as adding helpful notes for Google to understand that her page is a recipe. Later, a popular food blogger shares the link to Zara's post. Many people visit her site, spend time reading it, and even share it with their friends. All these things put together, like a fast website, a useful content, other trusted websites linking to her, and people staying on her page help Zara's blog show up higher in Google's search results. This is the power of SEO. It's not just about keywords. It's about creating a great user experience, building trust, and staying relevant.